is Caitlin and today we're making a pair of shifts from the Work Woman's Guide. Alright, so the last time I made these did not turn out well. So we're going to try again. Um, I'm pretty sure I know what mistake I made last time. So we're going to avoid that this time. So the shifts are found on page 46 in my copies of the Work Woman's Guide. Of my copy of the Work Woman's Guide. It's really long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but essentially, um, we're going to try out the largest size today, um, which is what I did last time, and the size I don't think was an issue, so we're going to go with that. So with the material 14 nails, now my fabric is extremely wide, so I think I'm just going to cut it 30, I think it's 31, I think it's 31 inches is 14 nails, let me check that again, 31.5, so, and I need it length of skirt cut in one piece. Two yards, 12 nails. So that was 99 inches. So 99 inches long and 31.5 inches wide is what I need my piece of fabric. So if anyone is interested, 99 inches is really just 2.75 yards. So it's two yards and 27 inches. Is that how, That's how long we're ripping it. There's a sufficient quantity for one. I do need two of them. I'm not sure if it's entirely best interest to sew one, make sure it works before I stitch the other one, but we're going to do both at the same time. Okay, so now we have sufficient fabric for two shifts. I'm thinking it might be better for me to iron these first before we start trying to fold them and doing that sort of thing. So I'm going to go iron and we'll come back and cut out the, or hollow out the neck and cut gores and all that craziness. Okay, so here we are. I have ironed it and I have folded it once lengthwise and once across as well. Um, and I did both of them, so like I have both shifts here. I'm going to try and cut all, all of it at once um, to make it just easier. I did mark, per the Work Woman's Guide, the halfway mark, which um, for the length of the 2 yards and 12 nails was about, halfway was about 24 and a half inches. So I marked that, and now we're going to cut, we'll start cutting it. Now we're going to start cutting it. So it says from B to D is the part to be gored off, and these gores are going to be turned around and sewn onto the bottom um, to widen the skirt, essentially. So B to D for the um, largest size is two and a half nails, which is roughly 5.6 inches. And then we're going to make a straight line, and pull it down. <laughs> So it'll be 5.6 inches across, and we're going to make a straight line down to my pin that I have over here. So let's go ahead and do that. And I need to draw a straight line from here to here. I'm thinking a run and fell seam is probably going to be the best bet for shifts. Um, that's what I've seen on originals. Granted, I haven't seen as any as early as 1830s, but I have seen a pair of 1840s one in person and they were run and felled. So, and I believe the Work Woman's Guide actually does state that, you know, underpinning seams that need to be sturdy need to be run and felled. So, we're going to do that. Alright, so let's work on hollowing out the centers here. So let's read the directions. So it says they're generally hollowed out after the cores are sewn in, but I kind of want to just cut it now when it's like this. So I'm going to cut it now like when it's like this, and hopefully I don't mess this up. So depth to hollow out the bosom is, or space to leave for the shoulders, that's important. I'm trying a hard time reading that number, but I'm pretty sure it's one and a half nails which is three and three eighths inches. And space to hollow out for the bosom, or the depth, is one and three quarters. Well, I'm really thinking that this is actually three quarters of a nail, not a quarter nail. I'm gonna kind of brush that off and do my math again. And the bosom part needs to be taken out the same, the same amount, so roughly four inches. So there's one of them. I'm going to mark 
back with one pin and front with two pins. That way I don't. That way it doesn't end up being where I don't remember. All right, I'm gonna try this on very quickly. All right, so I tried it on. Um, I needed it a little bit more hollowed out in the back and the front, so I added an inch hollowed out on either end of those. Um, it's quite wide. I mean, I was actually expecting it to be a little too small across the bust, but it's falling off my shoulders. So I think the next one I'm going to cut, the shoulder seems a little bit um, deeper. But I went ahead and um, hemmed it, so I did a very, very narrow hem across the shoulder, so I didn't take up any more fabric than I absolutely had to. So hopefully it'll stay on my shoulders somewhat. And then I took a little bit of a deeper hem in the front and the back. Um, it was going down to my ankles, which is quite long for a shift. So I cut about six inches off the hem. And I think I'm going to use a pencil with my copy of the Workman's Guide and mark in what I changed so I remember for next time. And cut this one out to different measurements. So, so I think I'm going to use the next smallest size. So two nails, which is... 4.5 inches instead of 5.6 inches. I think that's going to be a little bit more helpful. I'm going to try leaving 5 inches for the shoulders this time. So we're going to hollow out the front 5 inches and hollow out the back 5.5 inches. Alright, scores are pinned in. I think I will now iron down the hem of the neckline. And then I have a lot of sewing to do. Um, run it first and then fill it. And yeah, it's going to take a while. Cut some sleeves. So I have the scrap. Um, none of the scraps I cut earlier are going to work because the gusset and the sleeve need to be three nails wide, which is six, point, six and three quarters inches, basically. Um, and so I cut five inches off the skirt, so that's not going to work. So I just have it down this other scrap. We're going to see if this will work. Um, the pattern actually calls for them to be, or the sleeves to be, 13 and a half inches wide. However, um, my arm's a little bit thicker than that. Actually, it's about exactly 13 inches. But when you take single ounces up, that's going to be really tight sleeve. So I'm going to cut it 15 inches. Okay, it looks like the gussets are square gussets because it just says three nails. And from the picture, it looks like they're put in as a diamond shape. So yeah, three nails square, which is, again, 6.75, which is, again, six and three quarters inches. I'm going to set these sleeves in first in one of them and then go back and cut it again for the second one if they work, um, which I'm thinking they should since I pre-measured. So hopefully that's the case. So let's sew the sleeves together. I have the long bit. So basically you take the gusset and you put it on the edge of one sleeve and you take this corner and put it over to the other end and so your sleeve will basically, you'll have the sleeve shape, so here's the part that goes into the shoulder and here's the part that goes out the arm and this is going to be your underarm, that's where the gusset goes. And so it's more or less shaped like a diamond when it's in there. So I'm going to stitch this up. I'm running and filling these as well, so I'm not um, back stitching them. And there's a gusset of the sleeve, so what I'm going to do now is this is kind of naturally lays down flat to where the gusset's square. So I'm going to take the sleeve and I'm going to cut the seam down by half. Okay. Do the same thing on this side. And so what I can do now is I can take this and I can fold it under and iron it down to where I have a nice pretty seam there. And so I have one that I did that too, and then I also did some ironing for the hem. So we're going to run this again. And this creates a very tough seam because it's double, doubly sewn.
and sew it on the very edge where I folded it over. So there's the fold there, and I'm sewing it directly on the edge right there. And I don't know, sometimes I don't know whether it's best to do it this way and then this way, or I like to go this way all the way around and kind of catch up this way so I can do it all in one seam. I don't know if that's right or not, but that's the easiest way I found to do it. And whenever this gets done, the sleeve is ready basically to go into the armhole. Basically I have the gorse sewn in. Um, I haven't felled them yet. I figured it would be easier to fill them all at once. So I have this whole empty spot here. And I and I marked the center where the sleeve's gonna go, and I marked the very center of the sleeve. So the sleeve is is um, actually felt. And so there's our nice little diamond-shaped gusset and the sleeve bit. And the sleeve is set plainly, so there's no gathers or anything. And I already did the other sleeve on this particular one. And so what I found it was easiest was for me to start at this corner, go all the way around the sleeve, and then um, kind of make sure to do a couple knots here, or knots, but like back stitches here, and then go all the way down to where the gusset started, or the gore started. That way, it just seemed easier to do it all in one piece. And then we're also going to, while we're here, um, start stitching the neckline. So with a nice neat little hem on that side. And essentially we're going to just and we're going to also and of course I'm going to do the running stitch on the sleeve and side seam and then we can fill all the seams in the shift here afterwards um hemming will be the last thing we'll need to do all right we are ready to embark on the final step in the project which is hemming so i already ironed it up i think i ironed it up like maybe half an inch and then whatever this is i eyeballed it i didn't even try measuring and running stitch. I'm wearing my thimble this morning. My fingers are really torn up. I think it's less from this project and more from sewing through the fur on that shawl, which I also did yesterday. Kind of working on both projects simultaneously. <clears throat> that leather was hard to work through. This is actually the second chemise. So the first one, the one that we cut rather big before deciding that it needed to be cut down a little bit in the neckline tried it on. It is quite big. It falls off my shoulders, but I'm going to keep it um, just the way it is because um, if I ever end up doing an evening event or something where I'm wearing a very low cut gown, um, then I'm going to need something that's going to be off my shoulders um, and not bother me in that way. So I think it'll work just fine with that and it'll work very well as my extra. So my general rule of thumb for chemises and other bits of underwear, like um, drawers if we're wearing them, which I won't be for the 1830s, seems to be more of a British thing in the 1830s, um, and not, it didn't get seen to be picked up in America for a while. So, going just with the shift for 1830s, but um, anyway, so all of those types of undergarment type bits, I tend to... My, my general rule of thumb is one for every day of the event plus an extra. So if I go to a single day event, I need, I need two sets of underwear. If I attend a three day event, I need four sets of underwear. 
So my biggest event that I usually attend for, let me say this, my, the longest event I usually attend for 1860s is usually a three-day event. That's why I have four sets of 1860s underpinnings. As of right now, I don't foresee myself doing anything 1830s more than a single day or a couple hour event, which means I just need two right now. However, if it ever comes back and we have a whole weekend 1830s event, then I can come back to the drawing board and I have my measurements written into my workwoman's guide and we'll make a couple more chemises. And that extra is always a good idea. I always bring an extra dress to everything too, even if it's just a couple hours um, of me just dressing out and talking to people, then I will, I will always bring a second dress. You never know what's going to happen. I've had an instances where I was at events and my pocket caught on the edge of a doorknob and ripped my whole skirt out. Um, luckily it was a three-day event and I had an extra dress. Or um, one of my very first overnight events, I made a brand new silk dress. It was like my second silk dress ever. Um, and so it was the first one I really knew what I was doing. And I was super excited. It was really pretty. It was this lovely, like, dusty blue color. Um, which looks really good on me, and it was sheer, and it, oh, it was so pretty. Walking down the steps Saturday morning, first day of the event, I decided I was going to do some letter writing, so I had, like, my ink and my um, pens and that sort of thing. I spilled ink all over the front of my silk dress, brand new silk dress, uh, which was very disappointing. It, but fortunately, it was a weekend event, so I had an extra dress, but... Those two instances have taught me that even for short periods of time, I always bring an extra dress, and you always bring an extra set of underpinnings. You never know. There's a, especially when I'm going to like old old houses, they build old houses next to you know bodies of water to get you know water is important to living things. So you never know um, falling in creeks, um, slipping in mud. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen, so extra set of everything is always a great idea. Alright, so here's the first shift. This is actually the one that fits better than the other one, so this one's like still falling off. So yeah, definitely need to make this hole smaller than the next couple ones I make, but overall I think it fits this best. Um, I have shifts that fit, they will work. Um, yeah, so apparently I am not the largest size, according to my best measurements or whatever. So I'll know for next time. Um, other than that, yeah, um, this one will kind of fall off the shoulders, but not as badly as the other one will, which again, I think the other one will work really well for like evening wear or um, if I go to, yeah, like dinners and that sort of thing. It'll work for that type of gown, but this one can be like my normal everyday wear one. Um, and I think it'll be held up a lot more when I have like the corset on or whatever. Um, so yeah, overall I think it's a success, they fit. Um, they're comfortable. They, yeah, so I'm overall very happy with them. Um, yeah, the length is, I don't know if you guys should see it, it goes just past my knee and I wasn't quite sure. I, it seems to be on the longer side. I'm looking at some um, engravings and that sort of thing. Of, so it seems like, you know, it's around that length. So that's kind of what I went with. And I kind of like my chemises longer anyway, especially when I'm not wearing drawers. I don't feel as exposed when the, my chemises are longer, um, and then the corset will hold it into place up here so it won't like flap up. So yeah, I think overall a success. And yeah, I have workable chemises now, which is a good thing. So I think next up will be the stays, which I have the prototype done. Um, I just need to make it again, um, fixing a couple of fitting issues and then doing it by hand instead of by machine. So my prototype I did by machine because I wasn't going to put all that hand work into something that I wasn't, that you know, wasn't going to be like my final thing. I wasn't going to put all that hand work in. So um, we're going to do it again correctly with all that cording and uh, maybe I, and I think this time I'll get an actual bust instead of using a paint stick. Um, will probably work out, you know, better than what I have. So um, actually I think right now I'm using a plastic like neon ruler for my classroom. That's my busk. So let's get a real one this time and actually do this correctly. So yeah, um, that'll be the next step. Afterwards, we are ready to make dresses. 
So yeah, I have that planned out, I think, for next month, um, which today is the 1st of November. So it's in mid-December, I think, Christmas break, when I'm away from the kids, um, classroom kids. I think that's what we're going to do is make a couple of 1830s dresses. So there's a wool 1860s dress that I'm going to turn into a 1830s dress. I'm not sure if I'm going to cut it into a dress or if I'm going to cut it into a writing habit. As right now, that's still unsure. I have a silk dress length and I have two cotton dress lengths. So, um, yeah, actually the cotton dress length is actually leftover fabric from the 1840s wrapper because apparently I bought a ton of fabric. I thought I only bought eight yards, which is what I needed, but there's a whole other dress length in there. So I don't know if I did that or if a seller accidentally sent me that. I'm not sure, but we're going to go with it. And I've had that I've had that fabric for like years, so it's not like I can like, give it back or anything. So we're gonna make a whole 1830s dress with it. Um, but yeah, so I have that. Uh, I think we're gonna start with one of the cotton dresses, mostly because I don't know if I'm doing in the 1830s yet, and I want to make sure I know what I'm doing prior to cutting into that silk. So yes, those will be the next 1830s projects. Might sprinkle a few things here and there with like. And things to improve my impression, but from now on out, from here on out, I think we're pretty much doing for the 1830s clothing stuff with the, again a few things sprinkled in to um, either do at an event or just to add to something. Um, we'll be mostly working on clothing items, so pelerines, collars, cuffs, dresses, that sort of thing. So, yeah, one more step in the 1830s wardrobe. We're getting there. Um, by next month, I think we'll have a functioning wardrobe, though, so that'll be good. So I'm very excited to work with some more 1830s things and maybe getting a couple dresses done. That is super exciting that we're nearly to that point. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for joining me on making these shifts, and I will see you in the next video.